This is Matt Moneymaker with the BFRO, the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization. This video is for BFRO Report 73291 from Dade County, Georgia, February 2020. This incident occurred in the northwest corner of Georgia. It was a Class A visual road crossing sighting around 10 o'clock at night. There were two credible adult witnesses. It was a brief but very close range sighting in headlights. And it was a winter sighting not far away from some difficult to reach overhang caves just below the lip of a ridge, caves that face eastward that catch the rays of the rising sun such that the caves will warm up in back in the morning. Sasquatches really like that situation, so that area needs to be checked out. Uh, this happened in February of 2020. Um, in, a, in the state of Georgia, just a few miles south of a town called Rising Fawn, uh, north, uh, yeah, northwest Georgia. Um, my wife and I were driving home uh, from visiting family in Alabama. Uh, we were traveling north on Highway 11, and uh, we were going about 55 miles an hour, uh, not traveling fast at all, just normal speed. Uh, it was somewhere around 9 30, 10 o'clock p.m. Uh, so it was kind of dark. And um, as <clears throat> I was coming up the road, I saw this figure, or this thing coming up out of a fairly steep ditch. And about the time I saw it, it was, I would say, uh, 20 feet in front of the truck. And it was coming up fairly quick. Uh, I had just had just enough time to really get on the brakes. And uh, about the time it got to my front bumper uh, on my wife on the my wife's side of the vehicle, she was uh, she was sitting there looking at her phone and she looked up and uh, saw what I was hitting the brakes for. And at that point at the front bumper, um, I guess it's, it's shoulders and it's head was above the hood. And as we went by, it kept coming up out of the ditch. And, uh, when it got to her window on her door, it had raised all the way up to where its chest was in her window. And the, whatever this was, it was, it was like it was sucking it in to keep from being hit by the vehicle. Um, I've got a 2003 Sequoia and it's six foot tall. I measured this. It's six foot tall from the ground to the roof. And whatever this was, it, it had to have been at least uh, seven and a half foot tall or more for its chest to be in the window. And uh, it was a, it was like a, a grayish, whitish color with uh, a little bit of brown tan. I, I'd say it could have been dirty. I don't know. It was, it went by so fast, but uh, it, uh, it almost hit this thing, and I could see the chest and the arms on it. It had its arms straight down to its side, like, like I said, like it was, it was sucking in or you know trying to stop real sudden and not get hit and i did see the the arms on this thing was like uh, i would what i would say five gallon buckets i mean they were huge and the chest i measured the window on the door and the window is a little over 32 inches wide and this this thing's chest was not completely i mean you couldn't get it all in the window it was it was bigger than the window. Um, I mean, ever since then, I've I've went and bought a. I, I know what it was. I mean, it's it's obvious what it was. Uh, I, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, I, you know, I've went and bought a, a dash cam since then. Just I know the probability of this happening again is zero. But uh, I would have thought that before. But uh, 
my wife, she, she looked up and saw this thing beside her window and it, it freaked her out. When I looked up, I thought we were going to hit it, but I didn't even know what I was looking at. It was, um, huge. Uh, it, it was more what I would call the color of like a wolf. Uh, but it it had hair all over it, every bit of it. And I just got a glimpse of its face because we were going so fast. And when it, it come on up out of the ditch, uh, it was so close to the car. I don't know how it didn't hit the side mirror. Um, if I would have rolled my window down, I could have literally pulled the hair on its chest. It was huge. And uh, I still for sure can't tell you what I seen. I'm not sure what it was. I just know it's the biggest thing I've ever seen. It moved really fast. When I looked around as we went by, I, it was like a streak across the road. It went so fast, but it was huge. And uh, its arms was really, really big and long. Um, and its chest was really big. And it was, uh, I'll never forget it. And uh, I now believe in things that I didn't once believe in. I didn't think that it was real, but I saw something that convinced me otherwise. There's definitely things out there that, uh, you know, are probably not just myths and people telling stories. It's really true. There's something, there's, there's some really big living out there in those mountains because I saw it. I saw it with my own two eyes. Can't really tell you what it was. Um, it was just huge, and uh, it, it had enough uh, sense in uh, mind that it knew that we were fixing to hit it because it literally, as it was coming up out of the ditch, it like like got on its tiptoes or leaned back or something and pulled its arms well, back. Its to arms keep, were straight down. It yeah. pulled them down and back, uh, like to keep from getting hit by the car. And uh, it stopped enough, you know, to not get hit. It, it knew that. Uh, and it, I, I don't know that this thing was fully out of the, at the top of the ditch by the, you we know. We passed by the place yesterday where, um, it, where we, where it happened. And the ditch is so steep. It's like I told him, I don't think that it was fully standing up on the road. I think part of it was still down in the ditch. Um just which would bit, make it yeah. which would make it taller than eight, seven eight and, and a half. half foot it'd make it more like eight or eight and a half foot it yeah. was just i don't know uh, it, it was something that uh i wish we'd had a dash cam <laughs> yeah i really wish we'd had a dash cam so we could show it to people and they could see what we've seen and uh, i would like to be able to look at it and rewind it back and really look at this creature and see what it a thousand times what it actually yeah. you know what it actually was because i've never seen anything like that in my life ever and and what do you remember about the face uh, it, it was just hairy all over and it, it happened so fast i it wasn't like it looked at me and i made eye contact i just looked up and thought oh jesus we're fixing to hit this what is this and uh so it was i just know that it was hairy it was just covered in hair every bit of it was covered in hair um and it was like if it was a bigfoot or a sasquatch unless they've got different color hair because everything i've ever seen they look like dark brown or something like this this would have been an old one that was like gray headed or something because it it was more of a grayish brown color it was uh or an albino i mean there's deer it's, i, I it's don't know black color you know um but its face, it was it was all hairy, and uh, like I said, when I when he hit the brakes and I looked up, I thought we were fixing to hit it because it was like right at the uh, headlight of the car, and he had hit his brakes, so I'm not sure what speed we were traveling. I'd say down to 40, 540, something like that. But it just it went by the side of the car so fast, and it was sitting right next to me, and I was like, what was that? And uh, it scared me, and I just, I can't really tell you a lot about its face. I really can't. I can just tell you it was huge. The biggest thing I've ever seen. Uh, oh, definitely me. Yeah, it was bigger than anything I've ever seen. In, I've, in I've never life. seen anything this big uh, moving or running, you know, in, in real person. Um, well, what got me was as the front bumper got to it, it was coming up out of the ditch, and it just kept coming. And it kept coming and coming and 
And by the time it went by the door, I mean, it was above the roof of the vehicle, you know, and that I was, you know, I've had deer come out of a ditch. Well, I, I saw a black bear. It's nothing like we that. We saw bears. It's not even and comparable. Bear, yeah. It's not even comparable to bears. Uh, I saw a mountain lion over there where we live. It's a mountain lion looks like a, a chihuahua uh, compared to this thing. Uh, this thing was huge. <laughs> I mean, it was, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it was really, really uh, something. And... Like I said, I'd give anything if I had a dash cam that we could rewind it and go back and look again. And when my husband found your show, um, he what made him come on there is where we saw this thing. You actually have a documentation of someone back in the 80s. I think it was even the 70s. I might have been in the 70s or the 80s that was uh, in the vicinity, in, in that vicinity around there where we saw this thing. And I said, what if we saw the same thing that person saw back in the eighties? And I said, it's just really old now. Well, yeah, they, they described theirs as a brownish color and this was nowhere close. There to was that. nowhere close to that. It was not a brown. It, it was the only thing I would know to compare it to is maybe the color of a squirrel or, or the color of a wolf or, or a coyote or something like that. But it was, like I said, it was huge. And by the way, he, the location he gave, I don't know if you've ever heard of Sequoia Caverns, but Sequoia Caverns is probably three to five miles down the road from, from this siding. No more than 10 miles down the road. I'm not good with my distance there, but it's, it's, it's close. It's close yeah. to Sequoia Caverns and there's all kinds of huge caves and stuff around there. People comes in and goes caving over in those areas and, uh, I found that interesting too to see it because I mean these things could have been living off in these caves, you know. Okay, where you have the the map right now? Uh, you see where Cloverdale Road's at? Yes. Okay. There's uh, what looks to be two chicken houses in a field. Yes. To the south. Um, it, no. It's going to be. It's back here. No, this is uh, toward the house. This is south here. No, but those chicken houses are, are on the other you side of Cloverdale see, Road. You can't see those from either road. Okay. Where it is. So, yeah, there you go. Okay. Somewhere in between, right down here where it, it shows the Highway 11 sign by the 59, okay. Interstate 59 sign. Where the okay, so, so you're south of the chicken houses. Yes. Yes, okay. there's right down through there, there is two spots where the ditch is very steep and we couldn't really determine which of the spots that was that it came out of, but it's got to be definitely one of those two spots because the, the rest of the ditch down the road there is not really steep. So. Okay. Do you see where Williams road connects to the 11? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it. it was North of that. Yes. It's in between yeah. Williams road. It's in between Williams Road and that uh, next uh, Highway 11 sign that's showing. It was it was in in between. Okay, so areas. it was on that section where there's woods on both sides. Right there yeah. where you're, yeah, right there where you got the red. Somewhere oh. in those in that area is where it come out. Yes. And it come out on the the side uh, that your cursor's on, opposite of 59. Yeah, and it was heading across the road towards 59. Towards 59. Okay, so you see, uh, as we're going up 11 from Williams Road, there's like a driveway on the left. Yes. Do mm -hmm. you think it was past that, possibly? I'm thinking, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that it was right past that, just right past that going towards Rising Pond. Yeah. Okay. So right around in there, and it looks like there's like a power line easement, uh, and there's trees right on the right. So the ditch you're talking about would be underneath that tree canopy. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And do you see the picture of zoom in? There's a, it's actually showing a car on the road. Yes. 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 Somewhere's in that area, a little down. I think it was down a little further than the car is going towards Rising Pond. 
Oh, you mean for, further up then on the page? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just a little. That'd be north. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit further up, because we don't have to have the exact spot, but it, I mean, it helps to be as, 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 as accurate as possible. But I noticed there's, there's no distinct landmarks right there, especially if you're driving at night in the dark, not enough distinct landmarks for you to know right where the spot is. But it was before the next set of houses, before driveways. So you were yes. you you were in that section where you've got solid trees on both sides. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I would say so too. Yes. Okay. And yeah, it looks like, and I'm zooming in here on the left. I see what looks like a gap for a structure. Yeah, yeah. There's a structure. Yeah, there's, so so there's actually before. some like campers and stuff that people live in right there on that side of the road and I know I can't remember if we had passed those or if it was just before we passed those but it was in that area it okay was in that area and the thing is is it was crossing the road there the only other place that it had to go because that's just a very thin set of woods between highway 11 and 59 so was it going to go across the interstate what was it going to do but yeah it was probably going to go across the interstate it, it, that's what I would guess. I mean, looking at the map and pulling out, because that's the spot where 11 comes closest and you can stay in trees the whole way, stay under tree cover until you get to 11. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of trees on the other side of the interstate there. I mean, that, that goes up the back side of what um, they call Sand Mountain. And once up on there, I mean, it's it's pretty wooded up there. Yeah. And they come out of woods over on Lookout Mountain because on the other side of the interstate yeah, is Lookout Mountain. Been Lookout Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like you're at that spot. You're like a half a mile away from, or, or half a mile away from the Alabama border. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. We had just entered the state we of Georgia. We had just entered the state of Georgia. We had just come across the Alabama line not long, just, just barely got over. And if you go on down 11, uh, there, um, across from past Sulphur Spring Church and stuff, you'll go down to where you see that Sequoia Caverns I was talking about. That's like a 60 foot cavern down in the ground. They've made it like a, like, kind of like a little tourist site. It's not anything big, but it's really neat to see if you're ever in the area, check it out. Oh yeah. Well, if there's caverns there, I, you know, there could be the kind of uh, uh, rock formation, like if it's limestone, uh, there, could be little pocket caves on the hillsides outside this valley because it looks like i mean an aerial photo you can't tell but i looked at google earth and yeah that rising fawn in 59 is the bottom of a deep gorge it looks like where you got yes and so on the sides of that gorge uh there may be little pocket caves here and there yes if, if there's caves to the south Great. And, and how long have you lived in the Rising Fawn area? 20 years. Okay. So you would have, and you would see a lot of deer uh, oh, around there? Oh, yeah. My yard gets absolutely full of deer. Turkey. We saw panthers. We saw mountain lions. Bob we cats, saw bobcats, foxes, little foxes. A uh, fox raised a family in my yard. Um, it's a... Uh, it's pretty secluded. Yeah, yeah, it's very secluded, and it is full of wildlife. Absolutely full of wildlife. Uh, it's been an excellent food source. I mean, yeah. <laughs> There's so many deer there. Everyone tells everyone whenever you're, like, leaving, even our neighbors and stuff, watch out for deer because there's constant deer on our road. Amazing. You see, you see deer all up and down the interstate, where, which is really sad, but where they've been hit trying to cross the interstate. And you know, that's the commonality in almost every sighting report location. Not all of them. Sometimes like in, in there's places in the Southwest where there'd be like a river bottom uh, where there might, there would be some deer, but the big protein supply would be migratory birds, like ge geese coming down for the winter. Uh, you know, they're getting, they're coming out of the we, north and so the river better be full of geese. We have a small pond 
and we are covered up with that's geese. funny geese, you mentioned that yeah geese oh. and we watch the geese fly over our house and it's like clockwork you can tell what time it is of the day because every day at the same time they fly uh north and and then in the morning time at the same time this whole group of geese flies back south Wow. Okay. And so there's down in that valley, you're saying there's a, a good running creek the whole way. Oh, there's water yes. sources. Yes, there's a waterfall. There's this huge waterfall that comes off the side of the mountain up there. You've got Cloudland Canyon State Park right up above our heads. Okay. And which, which side of the freeway, which side of 59 is the creek on? Because I can't see it that easily. It may be under trees. Uh, the creek is, is the creek is in the tree line, and it's on the side of Highway 11. Uh, if you're looking down on that, it's going to be on the right of Highway 11. Okay. Oh, I see it now. I see it. And now it'll cross under 11 on up the road, and it'll get over on the other side and be in between Highway 11 and 59. Yeah, for a little bit. For a little bit, it'll be on the other side of the road, but the most of the creek runs um, to the right of Highway 11. If you're traveling oh, right north there. to Rising Pond. Say right there, look out look Creek. Look out Creek, that's yeah. it. Yeah. That comes off from uh, Cloudland Canyon, a state park that's north of Rising Pond, up on the mountain. And uh, I used to be a realtor and I sold real estate and there is some gorgeous waterfalls up on that mountain and and it looks like a big river running up on the mountain really yeah and that yeah. drops off the mountain there you go at the very top of your map you'll see uh, the preserve at lookout mountain resort we live right around the road from that preserve and it's thousands and thousands of acres of untouched land pretty much yeah it's amazing because i okay there's I, all I, kinds I, of they call it a hundred acre lakes or something like that in there. They've got tons of acres of lakes and ponds and there's creeks running through there. People goes and camps there. It's beautiful. Yeah, there's Cleveland Canyon. Yeah, I would have figured, I would have thought, well, I should have assumed if you're in Northern Georgia, it'd probably get mountainous. But I guess just by default, I figure everything would be kind of flat farmland. But boy, it is not that. No, you need to come and see it. <laughs> you need to go visit. You really should come to the area and check it out. Um, yes. Probably if you could get anybody to talk, I bet there's a lot of people that's been around there that they seen tell things, some stories, yeah. that, but they might not talk about it or tell it because they think people would think that's crazy. But I know what I've seen. I know, I don't know what it was. I can't tell you for I'm, sure. I'm about 90%. I know. I'm 100% certain it was. I'm certain it was something bigger than I've ever seen in life and uh it just made me believe I, I never really I don't think I ever really believed in Bigfoot I just thought it was you know when I was a kid my my grandparents and my parents would tell me these little scary stories and stuff to scare me and I just kind of guess I always thought Bigfoot was something like that until I saw what I saw and when I saw it I was like okay wait a minute you know, maybe this there really is something to this. And well, we, that's like uh, there's a cave over here on the other side of the mountain in Scottsboro called Saltpeter Cave, and I've heard for years the old old story back, I guess in the 20s or 30s that the cave wasn't being uh, worked anymore because they, you know, they they dug the saltpeter out of it for the uh, the ammunition or the the shells for the Civil War. And um, they they got after this thing. They didn't really call it a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot, but a group of men got together and they tracked this thing and ran it into the mouth of South South uh, Salt Peter Cave. And um, they actually camped out there for a night or two to see if it would come back out, but they never never saw it again. But the cave Salt Peter Cave runs under a mountain and comes out on the other side of the mountain so i mean it's it's like you said these caverns and caves we're covered up with them yeah that, and that's exactly the kind of i mean you got caves you got a lot of wildlife you got a lot of deer uh and it's a zone where there has been other reports in the past right. so this is great and 
it was, uh, you know, it, it was a couple of years back, but that's still recent enough, uh, you know, where there's a, there's a good chance that one is still in the area, uh, or the, know, at least the I one you saw. Bruh. I think the one that we saw, I honest to goodness, I don't know why I think this, I don't know, just in, it's like, I don't know, this feeling that that's its home, that's its territory, that's where whatever this thing was lives, and uh, it it knew where it was going and what it was doing, it's like it had a, um, a destination that it was, it was headed to, and, and well, it's like you said earlier. I don't, I don't know. I just, it could be the same when, when he showed me this show, the night that he decided to, to send it in and, and tell our story to you guys, he said, uh, I, I, I was watching and I was listening and I said, Hey, could that, you know, that's right there around Cloverdale road. He's, he's literally talking about in the eighties. He literally looked at something right, and saw, where we it. saw what we saw. And I said, that is within a couple of miles, literally, of where we saw this thing cross the road. Is there, I've got chill bumps all over me right now. Uh, it, to me, it, there is a possibility. If, if, I don't know their life, how long they live or nothing like that. But if they, if they're anything like a human and they, it could have lived 20, 30, 40 more years. It could really be the same thing that person saw, and it's just old now. And gray, yeah. And that oh. very well could be. And, and you'd be surprised, I think, how many people do see gray-furred Bigfoots. They, they see them more often than I think most I never people heard. Do. I got chill bumps again because I never heard. I, everything I've ever seen on Bigfoot, I guess, has been commercialized. And, you know, it looks like a big giant uh gorilla or there. something that's nearly black or dark dark brown and i was like this is not what i've seen i didn't see you know it may it may have had that shape kind of it was just so huge i really couldn't and everything happened so fast uh <laughs> but i do know the color of its hair because i looked right at it i mean it was so close to my face it was within inches of my face if my window was down like i said i could have pulled its hair and uh it was, uh, it was definitely a gray, gray color. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm looking at the aerial and I want to skip on over to, for a second, look at this, uh, uh, what I see here. Yeah, there is, it, uh, I'll switch it back so you can, you can see what I'm looking at. Will you see where, uh, you know, in the aerial photo where the number 11 and 59 meet? Yes. This is, let me get closer to the name of that. Just north of Williams Road, uh, in that there's trees on both sides. If it was crossing there and continuing across on the other side, you have a very thickly wooded gorge yes. that's coming in kind of perpendicular to the to 59. And, it, yeah. and there's, there's a cave back in there too. There's a cave over on that side that I know for sure is there. Is that Fox Mountain? Yeah, it's Fox Mountain Cave. Really? Because that 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 gorge in there, there's no houses back in there. And yeah. that's the kind of place where a Sasquatch, the, the, what would be attractive about that little gorge in the winter. Uh, and that's what, what time of year you guys saw it. It was February. Um, yeah. The winds, the coldest winds are coming in from the north and they're coming in actually from the northwest. So if you wanted to get out of the wind coming from the northwest and you see how 59 is angled. So 59 actually po points up in that section is pointing to the northeast. Yes. So it's directly perpendicular to that in that gorge that's pointing toward the northwest, but that's the direction the coldest winds would come from. They'd come from the north, and they're they're you know the winds don't blow from east to west. They generally blow from from west to east, and they're coming in you know sometime in the in in winter they're coming from either the west or from the north. But if you wanted to get out of them, the best place is below the lip of a mountain, or you know to to be on a slope where right. so, so they're using that as a windbreak yeah exactly that's a lee right. you're getting out of that coldest wind if you're in that gorge and if you're in a cave in that gorge then you're really out of the wind and that would be the warmest natural place 
that you could be in the winter without sitting in a hot spring. I mean, and and I've camped in the winter, uh, you know, gotten caught in a snowstorm and gotten like, oh, you know, really worried about what we're going to do. And fortunately found a cave and it, it felt like, I mean, it was amazing because inside the cave, it was like 55 degrees, which was, you know, a whole lot warmer than, you know, 20 degrees outside the exactly. cave. And uh, it, it felt relatively comfortable. But, th- th- you know, if they're trying to get out of the wind and the freeze, that's what they would do. But, yeah, on that side, uh, they would be getting out of the winds from the north. And then when the sun comes up, the sun rises to, when you're looking at the screen, it rises to the right. It rises in the east. Yes. So you have warm sunshine coming in and shining against that hillside. Right. And, exactly. And that's another way to stay warm. But it doesn't look like there's any exposed rock faces. But you you would tell me, is that pine trees up there or is that oaks? I'd say probably pines. It's that's... all kinds of trees. There's going to be oak trees and pine trees. Some, it's... but mostly pines, I bet. Okay, because there's that's the thing. Feeders. If yeah. it's feeders. if it's solid pine, then the sun isn't gonna reach the ground or shine into a cave that's under the pine. But if there's some oaks mixed in, in the winter, when all the leaves are off the tree, then the sun can shine through and reach the ground. And get the thing they like the, the best in winter, in a cave that's east facing, such that the, the rising sun, when it comes up, it actually shines into a cave toward the back. Oh, they like that. We've found that a number of times where they've gathered in bedding stuff and set up a whole bunch of mat you know grassy almost like a big mattress about a foot thick of soft grass or leaves right at a spot that would be warmed up in the morning sun at the back of a cave right intelligent well that's uh yeah from what i saw i've saw deer and, and other animals get hit this thing showed an intelligence because I mean, you you hear the expression deer in the headlights. You know, this thing didn't have deer in the headlights. It know to react and react fast when I almost it, hit it. You know, if you were fixing to run out in front of a car and you looked up and saw it and you were so close to it that you know to get on your tiptoes and pull your body back and kind of stand straight back and up to keep from... Yeah, you'll get as thin as you can, you to know? Keep from, that's what it did. That's yeah. literally what it did. And that's one of the important things about this report, because people say, you know, one of the questions they say, well, how, how come nobody's ever shot one? And of course, that's because they, they're, first of all, they're big and scary looking, and they look enough like a person at a distance that you would be unsure and you wouldn't shoot at it. And the other reason is they usually don't have a lot of time to think about it before it's out of view. But and then people ask also, well, why hasn't somebody just hit one with a car? And that's and that's simply because they think if it's covered with fur like other animals, that it must be dumb like other animals. They can't compute something that's covered with fur being very smart and smart enough to avoid being hit by a car. It knew. That's what this displayed. It absolutely knew. I said whatever that was knew to stand up and scoot itself back you know just just draw back to keep suck it up and get thin yeah. to keep from from hitting the car uh, or the car hitting it it knew and you're and real dog, and, and no. you're real sure that it that after you passed it it, it shot across the road behind the car yes i saw yeah. it i saw it go across the road but it was so fast and it was dark of course there was no headlights on it then it was just like well, at that point, it looked like a black shadow because, like I said, there's not really any street lights or anything there. Well, and you would have had tail lights would have given a little bit of illumination. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, but it was, I just saw the movement of it and it was just so fast. It, it's like it moved so fast and it was out of sight. And how, how did you see, were you looking at the side view mirror or did you turn to look back? No, at I it? turned around and looked out the back window. And, and what did you say to each other right after you this happened? We stopped. We literally stopped dead in the road and was like, what was that? How yeah. far away did you stop? 
just within minutes. I mean, we didn't even Probably. make it to Cloverdale Road, no, and we were yeah. stopped in the road. Okay, but was, you you didn't pull over immediately. Like you didn't stop such that. No. Do you think it would have seen you pulling over? Yes. I think so. Yes, yeah. unless it just kept running, unless it just kept sprinting and running just as hard as it could get into its destination and it didn't hang around to see what we were doing. Okay, well, let's a, let's give a count. Do you, do you think it would have been more than 10 seconds or 30 seconds? Estimate how much time between the point that you saw it and the time that you pulled over, because you would have had to stop and uh, think about it for, for a little while before you I pulled would, over. I probably, I probably dropped down with my speed uh, to about 40 and then I just let off the gas, you know, and uh, I was just gradually given the break. And I mean, it, it shook me up. Yeah. I, I thought I had done hit something, you know, and I don't know what you think. Maybe I'm trying to think I'm thinking I'm 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And probably. I look up and I mean, it was like one, two, three, four, five, and we were past it six, maybe, it was just a matter of short seconds that as far as when I spotted it and when it, it, went by. it come right by my yeah. side, it was, it was like, just like that. And, uh, then I immediately jerked around to try to see what, what it was. I wanted to see it. I wanted to see what it was. And I just saw like the shadow of it crossing the road fast. It, it was fast. Yeah. It was kind of one of those things where you're trying to process what you just saw. Plus, you almost hit it, and you know you. I mean, that instantly puts your nerves I would say on edge. Maybe a total and... of twenty seconds, <laughs> and he was stopped dead still, and we're just sitting there looking at each other like, "What was that?" Yeah, uh, did you see? What did you see? You know, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's like, "Well, what did you see?" And she came up with something last night that I hadn't even thought of. Uh, have you seen? Um, the pictures of this like really muscled up kangaroo that's on on the internet i i've seen a few muscled up kangaroos before so i know what you mean yeah okay well that kind of imagine imagine that giant, way bigger <laughs> super giant kangaroo like that but with a different kind of face its face i can't really tell i, I just saw a glimpse of its face because i mean it was at my window before i knew it but its face wouldn't have been shaped like a kangaroo's. It would have no. been shaped more like, uh, I don't know, more like what? Uh, like know, a person. Like, really. like a it, person, really. Like like what you, uh, 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 like you, the pictures you see of Bigfoot and stuff. I mean, it was wet. more like yeah. a, it was more like a human form, uh, but it was a giant. Out of proportion. But it was really, really muscled up it was like uh oh i i i said last night i said you know that muscled up kangaroo he said yeah i said that's what its shoulders and arms reminded me of but in a giant version yeah wow <laughs> yeah i hadn't even thought about that but that's yeah that's pretty spot that's on that's all i know how to explain i mean it's i really couldn't see its lower part of its body at all i didn't notice it and it was definitely not on all fours it didn't run on all fours it was on its hind legs no. it was it was like a human it was moving like a human well i've never uh, seen anything that could be beside the vehicle and stand still long enough for the vehicle to get past it and be above the roof of the vehicle oh, you know what yeah, i'm saying you couldn't even see its head i mean its head was way over top of the vehicle it was chest it was just chest, chest. And arms. it was more like it was more like and i'm i don't know how, no other way to say this other than it was more like it's boobs was right at the top of the window kind of i don't know how to explain it yeah but it's it's chest was huge and yeah I, I i certainly know what you mean i mean that and uh and and you're saying so the edge of the asphalt right at the edge of the asphalt the ditch starts yes 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 Okay. And I'm not so sure. I'm really not so sure that it made it all the way up like its feet would have been on the asphalt. That's what I'm I said. thinking yeah. the way I don't know why I think this, but it wasn't totally out it, of the it ditch. It don't feel like it was totally out of the ditch. It feels like that it stopped. It was still coming it, up. It realized it was fixing to get hit and it was still coming up. And, and it wasn't all the way up on the road and it just it just straightened itself out and pulled itself back like sucking in like to not get hit yeah and it, it literally I, there's some ditch views right here yeah i'm going south 
and then I'm going to turn around. And this is the south direction. So now I'm going to turn around and go back up. Okay. So there's a house on the left, and now we're getting into the section where there's woods on both sides. And so I see the ditch. Yeah, right up there on the right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, somewhere right around in here. Yeah, and that's a pretty good little steep little ditch there. At this part, you would have noticed, well, at night, it'd be hard to know. Unless there's lights on, you wouldn't necessarily see that there's... And look, when it came up out of the ditch, when it came up, instead of running like straight across the road, uh, it ran at an angle. It was running at an angle back, uh, away, from back us. away from the car. Yeah. Like it okay. was running towards the south in a way, like a, an angle south. It, okay. It should be right there is where we saw it. Well, that right there is that culvert thing. I don't think it was running right there. It was yeah, it could it could have been not far past it. So yeah, yeah the it was on one side or the other of that. Yeah, so it there is a slope going down. I mean, it's not a sheer drop off, but it's a slope. Yeah, and so that's where you would have seen it coming up out of after dark, generally right yeah. right around in there, and yeah, you would have seen motion Somewhere. of it of it rising up. It was uh, uh, it was an experience that I'll never forget, and I'm definitely going to tell my grandchildren and my granddaughter, who will be two tomorrow, you know, uh, <clears throat> believe in everything. Just believe in everything. There's a possibility that there is Bigfoot. There is a possibility. I think I saw one, and uh, I'm pretty sure we did. I, I just, um, you know, because I really didn't believe in it. I'm telling you, I did not. I would kind of laugh at my husband because he would say stuff and he'd say, well, so-and-so told a story or do you hear this? And I'm like, I don't even oh, believe in that stuff. That's nonsense. Somebody's just made that up. They're just telling. And then when I saw this, I was like, okay. Wait the, the way I grew up was in a family of hunters. And I mean, we would go out to very remote locations in the winter and, you know, we would camp for like a week at a time. And you know, you're sitting around campfires and you've got seven to 10 older gentlemen, you know, sitting around, they're going to start telling stories. I mean, these, these were church going folk. They didn't drink. They didn't, you know, they didn't get into trouble like that. And they just told their, their life experiences. And I've heard, you know, some pretty good stories and some of them, you know, involve like hunters getting tormented in in an old cabin up in the woods and stuff like that and i mean they weren't telling this just to scare the kids i mean they were telling this as you know hey this happened to my grandpa you know or this happened to my uncle and uh, yeah i was kind of familiar with you know the whole bigfoot or whatever he's been intrigued and, by it and interested uh, by it and, I've, and I've, lived in, yeah, I've lived in the woods since a child and i've never seen anything like that but uh, you know there's there's probably a good reason you've never seen anything like that they're intelligent i mean i i firmly believe that that thing knew it was about to get hit and i'm surprised i didn't take the mirror off on the door on her side with this thing it got out of the way it, it, yeah it, it, it knew it absolutely knew what was coming Thank you so much for submitting the report and uh, being available to talk about it, because I really do think it, it helps uh, with Bigfoot research, uh, not just locally, but Bigfoot research across the country and provides some insight into how these animals operate, time of day and what they will do and won't do and their coloration. All those little details are, are, are very important to collect. And, and you guys provided them, and I, and I thank you for that. Well, you're very welcome. We thank you, and hopefully we can help, and everyone can obtain more knowledge and understanding of these creatures and that they do exist.